The Civil War was a time of great change. Our country was divided, and we fought against another. Battles were won and lost, resulting in about 620,000 casualties, lost family members, and friends. Out of all of these battles, the fifth most dead and the bloodiest was the Battle of Antietam. General Robert E. Lee marches into Maryland, taking over towns like Frederick and Hagerstown. McClellan's army moves from Washington, D.C. into Maryland. They meet up in the gaps of South Mountain. The Confederates fall back, and this gives Lee time to find a battleground that he likes. Lee selects a place near Sharpsburg and Antietam Creek among the rolling hills. During this, Stonewall Jackson had taken over Harper's Ferry and joined him. On the afternoon of September 16th, McClellan decides to attack. He wants to corner them and finish them off. The first attack is next morning. He first wants to take over Dunker Church, but the Confederates occupy high ground above it and they release heavy fire. The battle quickly becomes some of the most savage fighting of the Civil War. The Confederate pushed the Union back through a cornfield. But the Union pushes them right back. One division of the 12th Corps manages to get past the Confederate lines and reaches Dunker Church. More soldiers come in and enter the Westwood, only to be in a powerful Confederate attack. In mid morning, the battle changes direction and enters an old sunken farm road. A Union Corps led by General Sumner contains 10 regiments, which only of three had been in battle. The North Carolinians take control of an old wagon shortcut, which a portion of it is sunken. There, the Union faces 1,700 casualties under General French's division. The Confederates begin to fall back to Sharpsburg, and around 10.30 a.m., 5,600 lay dead, or what is known as the Bloody Lane. By mid-morning, Lee's right flank, which is the most important because it is closest to the only escape route, is on one side of the river. Across the creek, Ambrose Burnside's Union soldiers wait. He has been told to attack on the right, which will distract an assault. Burnside divides his force by sending General Rodman's division three quarters of a mile down the creek to cross at Snavely's Ford. His other division will go across a 12-foot wide bridge. 100 feet above the bridge, on a hill, lay over 400 Georgians, backed up by 12 cannons. The divisions near the bridge each try to cross it, but get pushed back. Finally, one pushes right through and takes over the bridge. Around this time, Rodman's division crosses Snavely's Ford, and the Union pushes back the Confederate Army. After a 17-mile walk, A.P. Hill's men of the C.S. approach Rodman's men. This arrival saves Lee's army. The battle ended with 12 hours of brutal fighting and have shrunken Lee's army to 30,000 men. For failing to chase Lee... Abraham Lincoln fires George McClellan two months later. More than 3,600 men were killed and 19,000 were wounded or captured. This was more than Pearl Harbor, D-Day, and 9-11. President Lincoln uses the victory to announce the Emancipation Proclamation, which would change the war and American society. After freeing the slaves, Lincoln had let African Americans become soldiers. By the end of the war, over 180,000 of them would serve their country. On September 17, 1867, the five-year anniversary of the battle, the Antietam National Cemetery was dedicated. While Confederate dead on the battlefield were largely re-interred in the Confederate Cemetery at Hagerstown, Maryland, the Union dead were reburied here. President Andrew Johnson would declare on the dedication day, when we look on yon battlefield, I think of the brave men who fell in the fierce struggle of battle and who sleep silent in their graves. Yes, many of them sleep in silence and peace within this beautiful enclosure after an earnest conflict has ceased. There are 4,776 soldiers buried in the cemetery, with almost 40% of them being unknown. Over St. Patrick's Day weekend this year, I visited Antietam with my Boy Scout troop. We walked through the open fields and forests that once was the bloodiest place in American history. We walked on the bridge and through the sunken road. The Battle of Antietam will always be remembered.